Okay, this is how you can add custom filters in bulk, which is uh, a little bit tricky and it's hopefully going to change now with their, they're supposed to come up with a new one, but this is what works today. So you go into advanced settings and the first thing you want to do is to create a custom uh, template that only has the information that you must have or need. And the reason for doing this is that anytime you use the standard bulk update, you run a chance of, depending on what you messed up, of over, because there is no undo button at this point. So if you make a mistake, you can really mess up your catalog big time. Um, I once deleted 7,000 primary images, which is one reason I don't mess with images at all. Uh, in bulk. So let me show you what I've got in this filter. It's actually really very basic. There are five filters you have to have, which are these. So it's the item type, product ID, and, and you won't have a product ID. I mean, if you're exporting, you will always have a product ID. So what am I talking about? And then the product URL, which I like to have in case I'm making changes and product custom field. I always uncheck the images for the reasons I mentioned before, but I don't need the description, the pricing, or anything else. So once you've done that, and I've already saved this, then you go into to products and you pick an export and see how I've given it a name I understand. And I often make a lot of custom templates like ones with the SEO fields or, or, you know, anything like that. If you're going to do a bulk price change, that would make sense. So now I'm going to export my products. And pop them in the right file. In this case, I'm just going to pop them up here into downloads. Ah. Now, one of the first things I recommend is that you save an un unedited copy. That's your undo button. If you make a mistake, then you can always put it back. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. In this particular case, I'm actually making category changes and I'm adding custom filters. So um, this is me double checking to see what I want but I mostly just want to know the product name because that's how I know what all these things mean. So one of the other steps to this is to come in and make a filter plan. So this tool is very particular. It's case sensitive and an S is different from, or I should say the plural version is different from the singular version. So roughneck and roughnecks are two different filters. So you want to be consistent. And this defines which, which, what, which option you're changing. And these, of course, on this particular file are the choices that can be done. If I find something new, I add it to the list. But by maintaining this master list, my employees are set all set up to be able to do that. So let's find one I haven't done. Do, do, do. We're, we're working our way through here, as you can see. So this one, these are tools. Tangfolio. Let's go down here. We've been working. That's an accessory. And it looks really confusing, but they're pretty easy to do. And you, you, what you do is you separate each one by a semicolon. And then let me explain the differences here. So when you're the format, when you get in there is the name of the field equals, and if it's a single word like this, I'm actually going to go in there, then this is really all you need. And then of course, if you have another one after it, you would put a semicolon in there. Now, if you have two words like palm swell, and I'm just going to do a copy and paste, this has to be done differently. So I'm going to come in here 
and I'm going to come in here and paste. And in this case, you have to have quote marks. And, and if you're going to put a semicolon after it, it goes after the quote marks. And that's pretty much it. So in order to build one, all you'd have to do is you'd come in and you'd say, okay, model equals, and don't worry about the bold, that'll disappear. Model equals, and of course this is a little bit of a, no, that one's actually with the hyphen, that's going to be all one. So that's fine. And then you would say texture equals, I'm going to pick one that needs the, the colon. So it would be texture equals, and this is needs the quote mark in both cases because it's more than one word. And then we might have, let's see here, color, where's the semicolon, uh, material. So we'll come in and it looks like this again. And then we'll pick one that doesn't. And that's what it would look like as you build it out into the spreadsheet. And as you can see here, that's exactly what we have. We have everything's got quotes except thickness, which is a single word, and texture, which is a single word. And that, and then when you're done, and like in this case, this is the store's entire catalog. So a lot of times I will um, take just a part of it. You know, I've got somebody else working on the, the model. So I might come in here into Phoenix and we'll just erase all the fields I don't need. So we have Phoenix and I'm going to, a lot of times what I do is to, to find what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do highlight cell text that includes Phoenix. And now those are red cells. So then I come up to here and I will do a custom sort and I'm going to sort by product name, cell, I want cell color. And I'm going to, I want the pink. So now at the top, I should have just that brand. And in this case, we let's find the end of the, the Phoenix. And I can just delete the rest of this. So this is how I will do that. And sometimes I'll go in and do one and then turn around and um, uh, copy and paste it down and make changes. So this is a red back or a Phoenix red back. Usually it's just red back because there may be more uh, colon semicolon. Um, this is a, a thickness equals thin texture. These are all easy bogeys because none of them are two words and color equals pink. And I happen to know, even though it's not in the title, this is G10. So that's how I make that. And then I'll go through all the thin bogeys and change the color. So I don't really need this. So now I can see this and I'll go pink, do, 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 yellow. Oop, I spelled pink wrong. And that's the problem with the spreadsheet is it's really easy to do that. 
So that one's yellow. This one's going to be neon yellow, So which is two words. So I'm going to come in here and do neon yellow. Then I get really lazy and I'm going to go, well, this one's neon this one's neon green, so I'm going to do this and just type out that. And this one just needs to be orange. And so on as I go down the list. And then when I've got them all done, they're done. Um, one of the things I do here to make sure I don't miss one is the same exact thing. I'll do model because that's a keyword that's only going to be present if the, the options are in there. And that's how you do that when you're ready. Make sure it's a CSV and not an Excel doc and send it up, import it, and it should override all those products. Take care.